Hey guys, I am all in one piece after two very close grizzly bear encounters while I was in Montana. And in this video, I am sharing that experience with you. So I recently went on a trip to Wyoming and Montana. During that whole trip, I really wanted to photograph a grizzly bear. But in my mind, I was visualizing seeing a grizzly bear from the car window and being able to take epic photos while, you know, in the safety of my car. I definitely did not expect to be snuck up on one while hiking. Okay, okay, I'm getting ahead of myself. I haven't even started with the story yet. So on this trip, I actually saw four grizzly bears. So let's start with grizzly bear number one and go chronologically. The most interesting encounter, however, was the last one, so stay tuned. The first grizzly bear was a very, very popular bear. My friends and I were driving north through Yellowstone National Park and there was a grizzly bear across the river near Hayden Valley. The bear had killed an elk and buried it. There's a viral YouTube video that someone captured that shows the moment of the kill. But anyway, while we were passing by, the bear was just guarding the buried elk, scaring away the crows that wanted to take a bite, and napping on top of the elk so that, you know, no one would come and steal his prey. There were a lot of people that were watching this from across the river, which definitely caused a huge traffic jam. And there were a ton of photographers. In fact, many of the photographers that were there had amazing equipment. The type of equipment I could only dream of being able to afford. They made my Sigma 150 to 600 millimeter telephoto lens look really, really tiny in comparison. I took a bunch of photos of this grizzly bear and his prey at 600 millimeters. Overall, they're pretty good photos, but I know there's a lot better photos out there of the same thing. Still, it was really exciting to see a grizzly and his prey. Never in a million years would I have expected to come across that. However, once I started to see hundreds, maybe even thousands of pictures of this bear online, I never got around to posting my own photos of this bear because it just didn't really feel special anymore. Anyway, after heading north the next day, my friends and I arrived in Glacier National Park, which is where we were spending the second half of our trip. And of course, I was secretly hoping to see more grizzly bears or just bears in general, and I wanted to see them from our car. You know, if I could have it my way. On our first day in the park, we did the Hidden Lake Trail, which starts from Logan Pass. And shortly after we began, we noticed a bunch of people looking out at the hillside with binoculars. And very far in the distance, there was a tiny speck of a grizzly bear walking along the mountainside. I mean, it was cool and all, but because of the distance, it wasn't anything I could really get a great photo of, even with my Sigma lens. That one was more for the memories. The next two days, nothing. No bears, no moose, not even a chipmunk, and no goats. I was starting to think, what's the point of carrying around this super heavy telephoto lens on all of my hikes if I'm not even gonna use it. But on our last day in Montana, everything changed. It started to snow up at Logan Pass. We were planning to do the Highline Trail to the Grinnell Glacier Overlook, which is not an easy hike. The snow definitely made for less than ideal conditions and we were debating whether or not we should still go. But since this was our last day, three out of four of us decided to go for it. We figured that if it got too bad, we could always turn back. Wow. I never expected to come here and just be hiking in the snow like this. Let's go find some mountain goats. To make a long story short, the snow made this one of the most challenging hikes I have ever done. Certain parts were totally fine, but other areas were covered in ice and had blizzard-like conditions. Our friend had to turn back at one point because she didn't have the proper shoes, but my boyfriend and I decided to continue. Don't worry, we didn't leave her all alone. She went back down with another group of hikers. As we continued along the hike, we passed a field that was filled with frozen huckleberries. A few Montana locals were snacking on them and told us to try some. Look at this, frozen huckleberries. Yeah. Delicious snack. After our huckleberry break, we continued hiking through snowy conditions for a few hours and almost made it to the Grinnell Glacier Overlook. What beautiful views of fog. However, that last stretch before the overlook was so covered in ice that we decided we were not going to risk our lives to get to an overlook point when there was probably not gonna be any sort of view 
anyway. The people that were coming back, you know, that small minority of people who actually made it, which I can count on one hand, said, uh, don't do it. <laughs> Those few people who made it across, they crawled there on their hands and knees on ice and, you know, one slip and, and that's it. So I asked someone who, you know, made that last stretch to send me a picture of the view, if they had a view, and this is the picture I got. So uh, that's what I missed out on. But anyways, the point of this video is grizzly bears, not hiking. So let me get back on topic. On the way back down, we spotted our first grizzly bear. Our first grizzly bear on this hike anyway. There's a grizzly, I think it's a grizzly bear up there. Um, he's at a pretty okay distance. I think. The bear was just above the trail. It was digging around, which caused a lot of rocks to fall down onto the trail. Oh, he's causing a rock slide. Oh my gosh. Good thing we're not walking there right now. This bear was very preoccupied with his digging. He barely seemed to notice us, but he did glance over, so he knew we were there. I'm not sure what exactly he was digging for, but it looked like he was munching on some roots or something. This grizzly bear was relatively close, but far enough away that I felt like I could take some pictures from a safe distance. With my telephoto lens, of course, not with a wide angle, of course. to spend too much time around here because you never know the bear could decide to come down onto the trail or something and uh, you don't want to be in its way so I just took a handful of photos and uh, we kept on walking but after this I felt overjoyed that I had seen a grizzly bear out in the wild there were only two other people around and it felt you know surreal it felt way cooler than that grizzly bear in Yellowstone which had you know hundreds of people in its uh, audience the next encounter however was a different story Drum roll, please. Okay, so we kept on hiking and eventually we got back to that huckleberry field where we had stopped earlier in the hike for a frozen snack. On the way up, there were quite a few people here, people who were eating huckleberries, but on the way down, it was just us. And the visibility was not good. And it was at this moment that I decided I was thirsty and that we should have a water break. After drinking some water and passing the water bottle to my boyfriend, I turned around and my heart stopped. There was a grizzly bear right behind me. I literally mean right behind me. Just a couple of feet away, maybe like 20 feet or so. Could be 15, could be 25, I'm not really sure, but way too close for comfort. In the short amount of time that we had spent drinking water, this bear had come down from the hill and snuck up on us and it was right behind us. My adrenaline kicked in. Suddenly I remembered everything I had read online about bear encounters and what you should do when you encounter one. You know, these are things I had been replaying in my head this whole trip, but um, it's probably a good thing that I read up on it. I tapped my boyfriend repeatedly on the shoulder and told him pull out the bear spray because we had one with us. And he acted quickly, pulled it out, and he pointed it at the bear. We started to back up along the trail and we started to make noise. I don't remember exactly what we said, but I'm pretty sure we were talking to the bear. As we backed up, the bear started taking steps towards us, and I got a little worried to say the least. My heart continued racing. We continued backing up, but honestly, this was getting really challenging because the ground was uneven and full of rocks and roots, and it's hard to back up on that kind of trail. They say you're supposed to keep looking at the bear. We might have spent a little bit of time looking at the trail, you know, so we don't trip. But anyways, we continued making noise and we made it around the corner. You know, the trail kind of curved a little bit and the bear did not follow us. Instead, the bear stayed in, you know, the area where we encountered it and it was eating huckleberries, the frozen huckleberries. At this point, two other people showed up. They were also hiking back. So the four of us got together, we huddled close together. Everybody who had bear spray, which was uh, three out of four of us, um, held the bear spray and pointed it towards the bear and made a lot of noise. Started yelling at it, everything that you read that you should do. The bear, however, did not seem to care and he just continued eating his huckleberries and at one point he even laid down. There was nothing we could do except wait and hope that he leaves because the way back down was where the bear was. And I guess we could have theoretically gone the other way, but that would have probably been another five hour hike and we know for a fact there's a bear back there too, um, which 
by this time that bear might be down by the trail as well. Anyway, at this point we were a bigger group and far enough away that I felt like I could take one or two quick pictures. The other three people kept holding their bear spray. You know, I pulled out my camera for less than a minute, maybe like 30 seconds or so. And I took a few pictures with my Sigma 150 to 600 millimeter lens at 600 millimeters. Uh. Right. Like if he comes down on this trail, we don't really have anywhere to go. I didn't have time in the moment to examine these pictures and decide if they were good or not. And in retrospect, they're not the best pictures. In fact, I'm kind of disappointed with them. In most of them, the bear was uh, looking down because he was eating. And I'm sort of sad that I didn't capture the entire bear encounter on camera. I had been recording our hike on the GoPro. I had captured so much of the hike on that. And I had just turned off the GoPro and put it away before we started drinking water. If I had just kept the GoPro running for a little bit longer, I would have captured that entire encounter on video. But I guess I learned something about myself. When I'm coming face to face with a grizzly bear, my survivalist instinct kicks in and not my photographer instinct, which is probably a good thing. I mean, in a situation like this, what do you grab first? Your camera or your bear spray? Well, definitely the bear spray. Anyway, the bear eventually wandered in a different direction and it gave us a window of time to continue along that small stretch of the trail along the huckleberry field. We figured we don't have much time because he'll probably be back to continue eating the frozen huckleberries. So let's go while the coast is clear. Needless to say, we spent the rest of that hike singing at the top of our lungs just to make sure we don't have any more face-to-face -face grizzly bear encounters. Seeing bears in Montana is not uncommon, but I'm pretty sure that seeing two grizzlies on the side of the trail on the same hike is uncommon. And I think in this case, it had a lot to do with the weather. Because it was snowing so hard, most people had already finished hiking for the day or they never even attempted to hike, which just meant that, you know, there were way fewer people on the trails and maybe the bears came out because of that. But anyways, I got what I wanted, which is photos of grizzly bears in the wild. They're not the best photos I've ever taken and they're not the sharpest, but I feel incredibly lucky that I had this experience and most of all, that nothing bad happened. When you see these bears from inside your car, it's a totally different experience than seeing them right behind you in the wild. And although my photos from the grizzly bear in Yellowstone are better than my photos from that Montana encounter, the Montana photos feel more special. They're closer to my heart because it's an experience I didn't share with hundreds of other people. So as I said, not my best photos, but photos with a story. And that story I wanted to share with you today. Anyway, don't go chasing grizzly bears. And if they chase you, don't grab your camera first. But if you do get a chance to see them from a distance, make sure you always have a good telephoto lens with you. You definitely wanna capture a bear with something like a 600 millimeter lens instead of a 16 millimeter lens because I don't think it would end well if you use that wide angle. Sometimes nature blesses you with an incredible wildlife sighting. Sometimes the experience can't be captured in the way that you want it to be, because nature is unpredictable and doesn't always show itself the way you want it to. So if you enjoyed going on this adventure with me, please consider giving this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you're new here. Until next time.